The Center for Equine Health at UC Davis operates one of the only USDA-approved contagious equine metritis quarantine sites on the West Coast. Many of the horses that arrive here for quarantine have traveled great distances by air and by land, and that type of travel can predispose them to transport stress. When the horses arrive here at the Center for Equine Health, we conduct a comprehensive clinical exam to ensure their health and well-being during our stay. When the horses arrive, we obtain their body weight on a scale to document their weight, and also that allows us to track their weight during their stay with us. Again, our goal is to allow them to gradually regain the weight that they lost in travel uh, with good quality hay. So part of our initial assessment of these horses is to get a feel for their general demeanor, attitude, and energy level. Horses that are suffering dehydration or other transport-related disease, such as shipping fever or respiratory disease, will often show depression, and they will not be interested in their environment. She looks bright and alert. She's checking out her environment, so this is a good sign that she's feeling well. We start by obtaining their baseline heart rate. And healthy horses will usually run somewhere between 36 and 46. And her heart rate is nice and slow and steady. And I watch her respiratory rate as well. Normal horses are going to run somewhere between 12 and 18 breaths per minute. A horse that's suffering from shipping fever will often have an elevated respiratory rate and effort, as well as an abnormally elevated heart rate and rectal temperature. This mare's lungs sound nice and clear, and her effort is normal. Many horses, while being transported, fail to consume an adequate amount of water, even when it is regularly offered to them. So after a long haul, it's not unusual for a horse to be behind on their water. And dehydration can affect their ability to clear debris from their airway, because the mucus that's normally present in their airway will dry out. Dehydration can also cause them to colic and develop intestinal abnormalities. So we screen their hydration carefully, and there are several ways to do that. One is to look at their jugular fill, and what we do is we hold off their jugular vein on either side, and in this mare, her jugular vein rises quickly to suggest that her blood pressure is adequate. Another is to check skin turgor, and we take a real gentle pinch just in front of her shoulder braid, and that skin goes flat immediately after being tented, which tells me again that hydration appears to be adequate. A third means of assessing it is to inspect her mouth and look at her gums. And her gums are nice and moist upon inspection, and when I compress my finger against her gums, the refill time is less than one second. So that tells me that this mare has been consuming water appropriately. Another means of assessing hydration is to listen to gut motility. Horses that are behind on their water will often have quiet guts. And a normal horse, the moment we put our stethoscope upon the abdomen, we will hear noise. And we move our stethoscope around, and we check an upper and lower quadrant on the left side of the horse, and we do the same on the right. And again, she has nice motility. Um, our technical staff monitors fecal output to make sure that they continue to pass manure when they arrive. And our goal here at the Center for Equine Health is to assess their uh, nutritional status and then to monitor their feed intake. We use uh, high quality Timothy hay for most of these horses coming in from Europe to mimic what they were eating um, in their home environment. And it will take them several weeks to regain the weight prior to transport. Part of our exam is to run our hands over their entire body and inspect for any evidence of trauma, uh, that may have occurred during travel. Uh, this does occur down at LA quarantine, but we repeat that after the trailer ride up here. Any Part of our examination is to get a palpation of the horse's distal limbs, again, to inspect for any evidence of trauma or injury during transport. To do this, we will pick the limb up and then do a dental palpation of all the structures it's not uncommon for these horses to have some puffiness or edema. Horseman's term is stocking up after transport because they've been stationary for quite some time. And we will often have notes of mild effusion in the tendon sheets and joints on our entrance exam that is no longer present on our exit exam. We do that with the forelegs and with the hind legs. 
and our goal is to be thorough, make sure we're not missing any small nicks or problems that could become a larger problem later. Okay. We do perform an inspection of their eyes to make sure that there's no evidence of trauma, that they're not tearing or squinting. We also look at their skull and palpate carefully to make sure that they haven't had any trauma in the trailer. We, we glance at their ears, make sure that there's nothing going on there as well. Look for any evidence of nasal discharge. Um, horses that are suffering from shipping fever will often have a nasal discharge and they may have a slight cough as well. We videotape the horses at the walk uh, in a figure eight and we also image them at a standstill from head to toe. And we get their distal limbs as well as their feet in the images. And these images serve as part of our medical record. And again, they allow us to establish baseline for the horses coming in. And we repeat the images upon exit. These horses have undergone extensive pre-purchase examination in their counties of origin. And the goal of this exam is to establish baseline information for the horses under our care.